Three carrier strike groups operating together in a joint exercise in the Western Pacific Ocean. The USS Ronald Reagan, USS Nimitz, and USS Theodore Roosevelt are all involved in air defense drills, sea surveillance, defensive air combat training, and other maneuvers. CNN Global Affairs correspondent Elise Labatt joining us now with more on all of this. So Elise, this is a very strong show of force uh, in the region. Are U.S. allies involved this while the president continues to be uh, in the Asian region there? Well, they are, Fred. Um, the South Korean uh, drills are taking their joint drills with South Korea. They have their own warships um, and Aegis missile defenses in these exercises, as well as the Japan, the self-defense forces later in uh, these four-day exercises, they'll be taking part in. Obviously, all a show to North Korea that despite its growing uh, missile and nuclear capability that, you know, this dominant force would be able to counter any North Korean threat. But you can also see, you know, these are taking place in the area of the, of the Korean Peninsula, also in the East and South China Sea. So while it sends a very powerful message to North Korea, it also sends a message to, uh, to China and others that, um, you know, the U.S. and its allies will be very dominant in the region. Hmm. And, and so how potentially might Trump's, you know, Asia trip um, impact efforts to contain Kim? Well, I think, Fred, that the president had like a very dual message when he was talking. He was talking about trying to, you know, get the world to rally, get all Asian nat nations to work together to counter uh, this North Korean threat. But on the other hand, he was talking about a very America first uh, trade and economic message. So I think that, you know, countries in this region are really looking for the U.S. to be a leader, not just on the security and to, you know, to ward off against bullies like China, but also on trade. I think that he also had a dual message when it came to North Korea. He was talking about um, a very forceful message. You have these exercises, you have this tweet, Twitter war that he had with um, Kim Jong-un. But in the last 24 hours, he was talking about possibly uh, becoming friends with him, as he said um, in the past, he'd be willing to meet with him. Take a listen uh, to President Trump talking about how he could be become friends with Kim Jong-un. <coughs> Steve, I think anything's a possibility. Strange things happen in life. That might be a strange thing to happen, but it's certainly a possibility. If that did happen, it would be a good thing for, I can tell you, for North Korea, but it would also be good for lots of other places and it would be good for the world. So uh, certainly it is something that could happen. I don't know that it will, but it would be very, very nice if it did. It would be very nice if it did, Fred, but there's no signal from North Korea whatsoever that it even wants to have talks with the U.S. or any partners in the region, any type of uh, diplomacy. And that's why the president's national security team has been working on this kind of dual track on, you know, forceful U.S. military presence in the region, turning up that, that pressure on the economic front sanctions, but also saying that it's willing to talk. I don't necessarily think this Twitter war between the president and Kim Jong-un is going to make uh, Kim Jong-un be any more willing to sit down with the U.S. president. South Korea is keeping a close eye on North Korea. The regime has been quiet for close to two months now, but as its military is preparing for winter training next month, that could change. Kim Yun bin reports. The South Korean military is maintaining its combat readiness against possible provocations from the north as the regime's military gets ready for its winter training. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said on Monday that it has observed the North preparing for the annual drills. North Korean troops are currently preparing to conduct ordinary field exercises, but our military is keeping a full readiness posture against the possibility of North Korea's provocations. The exercises are scheduled to start in early December and run until April. Meanwhile, South Korea and the United States held a joint naval drill in the East Sea involving three U.S. aircraft carriers. The Defense Ministry in Seoul said the USS Ronald Reagan, the USS Nimitz, and the USS Theodore Roosevelt arrived in the East Sea on Sunday. This is the first time the South Korean Navy has been joined in the combined drills by three U.S. carriers. It also marks the first large-scale joint exercise since the leaders of South Korea and the U.S. agreed in their summit in Seoul last week to increase rotational deployments of U.S. strategic assets on.
Three carrier strike groups operating together in a joint exercise in the Western Pacific Ocean. The USS Ronald Reagan, USS Nimitz, and USS Theodore Roosevelt are all involved in air defense drills, sea surveillance, defensive air combat training, and other maneuvers. CNN Global Affairs correspondent Elise Lavitt joining us now with more on all of this. So Elise, this is a very strong show of force uh, in the region. Are U.S. allies involved this while the president continues to be uh, in the Asian region there? Well, they are, Fred. Um, the South Korean uh, drills are taking their joint drills with South Korea. They have their own warships um, and Aegis missile defenses in these exercises, as well as the Japan the self-defense forces later in uh, these four-day exercises. They'll be taking part in, obviously, all a show to North Korea that despite its growing uh, missile and nuclear capability that, you know, this dominant force would be able to counter any North Korean threat. But you can also see, you know, these are taking place in the area of the, of the Korean Peninsula, also in the East and South China Sea. So while it sends a very powerful message to North Korea, it also sends a message to, uh, to China and others that, um, you know, Hospital now. There's about a thousand defectors coming over from North Korea to South Korea, but again, it's very rare doing this way. And one more quick note, Bill, another strange story at another stretch of the DM. carrier strike groups operating together in a joint exercise in the Western Pacific Ocean. The USS Ronald Reagan, USS Nimitz, and USS Theodore Roosevelt are all involved in air defense drills, sea surveillance, defensive air combat training, and other maneuvers. CNN Global Affairs correspondent Elise Lavitt joining us now with more on all of this. So Elise, this is a very strong show of force uh, in the region. Are U.S. allies involved this while the president continues to be uh, in the Asian region there? Well, they are, Fred. Um, the South Korean uh, drills are taking their joint drills with South Korea. They have their own warships um, and Aegis missile defenses in these exercises, as well as the Japan, the self-defense forces later in uh, these four-day exercises. They'll be taking part in, obviously, all a show to North Korea that despite its growing uh, missile and nuclear capability that, you know, this dominant force would be able to counter any North Korean threat. But you can also see, you know, these are taking place in the area of the, of the Korean Peninsula, also in the East and South China Sea. So while it sends a very powerful message to North Korea, it also sends a message to, uh, to China and others that, um, you know, missile test or any other type of provocation and many had hoped that this signaled an easing of tensions on the peninsula. It's currently unclear what response Pyongyang will give to Monday's incident. U.S. President Donald Trump says it's possible he could be friends with Kim Jong-un one day. 
This was not long after Trump tweeted that he would never insult the North Korean leader by calling him short and fat. Eugene Hee tells us more. President Trump sent out a tweet while in Vietnam for the APEC summit, saying he wouldn't call North Korean leader Kim Jong-un short and fat, following an insult directed at him from Pyongyang's foreign ministry. When asked if he could see the possibility of him being friends with Kim, he said there could be a chance. That might be a strange thing to happen, but it's certainly a possibility. If that did happen, it would be a good thing for, I can tell you, for North Korea. But it would also be good for lots of other places, and it would be good for the world. Trump has traded threats and insults with Kim in the past, amid escalating tensions over North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. Having previously called him Rocket Man, the U.S. president also warned the North Korean leader he was putting himself in peril and grave danger during a speech last Tuesday at South Korea's National Assembly. However, both sides may now be backing down somewhat, with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson saying dialogue could soon take place, adding the U.S. has two or three channels available to send messages to the North Korean regime. North Korea, for its part, has also refrained from military provocations in recent weeks. It remains to be seen if the brief lull in tensions could lead to talks between Washington and Pyongyang that could pave the way for formal negotiations in the future. Operating together in a joint exercise in the Western Pacific Ocean, the USS Ronald Reagan, USS Nimitz, and USS Theodore Roosevelt are all involved in air defense drills, sea surveillance, defensive air combat training, and other maneuvers. CNN Global Affairs correspondent at least. Carrier strike groups are.